Mm -hmm. Taxed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But they were uh, not directly, but in. This meeting is now called to order. I'd like to welcome any, everyone today. There are no minutes to adopt. Um, disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Seeing none. There are no petitions, presentations, or delegations. Would you read the resolution, please, Julie? Sure. Be it resolved that we do now move into committee of the whole. Someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Ketchabon, Councillor Vote. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. And Deputy Warden Marks is absent today with her uh, with notice. Uh, Councillor Mennell? Yes. Councillor Jaguer? Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh? Yes. And Madam Warden? Yes. 8 0, the motion is carried. Okay. Um, we'll now turn it over to Jennifer Ford um, for her presentation. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this special meeting for a uh, review of the budget to process to date. The first slide will outline for you a summary of the budget process. The budget committee was very busy this year, having six meetings over the period of July 2021 to January 2022. This timeline also included a period of public engagement using Bang the Table software from July to mid-September. The results of the 2022 budget survey can be found posted on our web page at the link provided there. And a summary of each departmental presentation and approved increases and decreases has been created and included for the purpose of this presentation in Appendix 1, which was circulated in advance. We also have the advantage this year to have a video record of all of our budget committee meetings. So a link was also provided on the departmental presentations so you can access that for further information and clarification. Today's meeting serves as an update and a debrief of where we were and where we are headed to provide some further updates since the last committee meeting and to gather feedback that may require further investigation to move the process forward. Some highlights of meeting one, which was held July 27, 2021, included the second quarter financials, which showed a favorable variance of 225,000, bringing our year to date performance to 402,000. An outline of additions to the 10 year plan since the last budget included 2.6 million, which are included in the 2022 budget and beyond. The proposed budget timeline was accepted in principle. The new small business subclass was outlined. The administration of this subclass was created in a different format from other subclasses, and the rollout was determined to be very complicated, and therefore the treasurers collectively agreed that it was not recommended to proceed with implementation. I believe subsequent to that meeting, it was presented to council and um, agreed that it was not implemented. The budget survey was then posted readily, ready for responses on our website. And in light of the pandemic and to accommodate social distancing, invitations to the public were posted on our phone and included in our weekly newspaper articles. Meeting two highlights. In advance of meeting two, the results of the budget survey were tabulated and shared with department managers. Some comments relative to areas that were not within our scope of work were received, and we shared these with the, the appropriate local municipal partners. Budget discussions began between finance and the individual departments. These discussions started the compiling of the departmental needs for 2022 and staff were able to utilize the budget survey to inform their work. Meeting two was held on October 26th, um, a CEO introduction of the budget schedule and presented outlined. The budget survey results were presented to the committee for review, and the third quarter financials were also presented, indicating further positive performance of 385,000, bringing the overall performance to date to 787,000. 
performance will enable the county some flexibility at that point to deal with risks and opportunities that may arise in the fourth quarter of 2021. Jen, can you turn your mic on? I'm not able to. Can we switch seats for you? I understand there's some difficulty. Um, uh, yeah, I can't even hear my phone ring. I can't hear anything Norma tells me. <laughs> Where can you capture her on camera? Anywhere? Maybe up here? Sorry for the disruption. It's just important that everyone be able to hear. Two highlights continued. The presentations were heard from department directors and managers outlining their preliminary tasks for 2022 and beyond. At the conclusion of this meeting, the Budget Committee requested further clarification on some aspects of individual department presentations. Further information was requested to be provided at the next meeting from all departments with respect to the following six questions. To what extent did your department take into consideration public input received through the survey? To what extent in planning for 2022 did your department take into consideration or account for inflationary pressures? To what extent did, have you considered offsets? In other words, what are you willing to give up? There is a need to make clear connections and provide more information about how priorities and initiatives link back to the source service delivery review recommendations. To what extent has your department collaborated with other departments to develop the draft budgets and arrive at your recommendations? And if your department was faced with a 5% cut, what would you recommend to be reduced or eliminated? And what are the risks associated with this? Meeting three highlights would be presented on November 8th. Uh, you heard an introduction from the CEO as an overview of the recommendations from meeting two, a more detailed overview of the results from the budget survey, and budget highlights from 2021 as a point of reference. Department directors and managers presented clarification on items requested by the committee from the last meeting, as well as their responses to the six questions. Further information was requested by the committee related to the following departments. Admin services, financial services, engineering planning and enterprise. Meeting four highlights. A brief overview of the budget process was presented. To clarify the details, department presentations were summarized into charts to identify revisions, deletions, and items that could be moved forward into the 2022 budget year with their financial effects on both the 2022 plan and beyond. Staff asked the committee to consider recommendations that can move forward and recommendations requiring further changes or clarification. Recommendations were approved to move forward for council consideration during this phase of the process. The committee requested that staff gather more information related to identified transportation projects, IT service management software, and ability to enable an in-house development software solution. The need for a POA generator was also requested. In addition, the committee requested data showing budget actual invariance for the last three years to, provide, to be provided for the purposes of comparison. Meeting five highlights were received on December 9th. <clears throat> Known additions related to the CPI impacts at 4.9% and new pricing received for HERD. Financial options to accommodate the additions to the capital plan. 
related updates to an IT house ticketing system, and additional EPE updates related to the POA generator, which was confirmed to not be required by the Ministry, add Curry Road pedestrian crosswalk installation, and we also heard about posting weight limit weight posting limitations on Fillmore Bridge that were causing operational issues for our municipal partner BAM. And therefore it was in it was determined that the Fillmore Bridge could not be postponed. So this bridge should be included in the 2022 budget deliberation. The committee requested that staff bring back options that use the growth of the county and incorporated an overview of option two and option one for further consideration. Preliminary, preliminary tax increases to tax rates should also be presented as is possible. <coughs> meeting, at meeting five, staff further, after meeting five, staff further collaborated to compile a solution to meet the budget committee requests to provide solutions and options to incorporate option one and option two of the engineering plan into the 10 year plan while delivering some tax relief to tax in the upcoming year. Highlights of meeting six were heard on January 12th. A comprehensive outline of the funds available for the overall county capital plan using the current budget numbers were presented. This included capital from all departments, option number two, and the immediate needs for Fillmore Bridge were additionally added. Funding for the Fillmore Bridge project using existing funds within the following three projects was deemed possible. The 2021 in-year reallocation of funds will alleviate the need to raise taxes to accommodate the immediate needs of this project. We also learned that we would, be able, we would be receiving additional OSIF funding during this time period, which was also incorporated into the budget. With the funding of Fillmore Bridge accommodated and the debt repayments covered using existing funds, the end of 2022 then showed us a small surplus. surplus. This surplus could then be reallocated in various ways, including setting it aside for use in future years. The committee had indicated that they would like to investigate the possibility of reducing the growth reserve for 2022 and return any surplus back to the levy, resulting in a reduction to the taxpayer wherever possible. If the newly found surplus was returned to the levy, the reduction would, would in, decrease the levy from 5.6 to 3.85. The implication of utilizing the growth by rolling it into the levy is that it is not likely desirable to increase the levy by the same amount in a future year to regain the lost funding. Therefore, the base would be permanently reduced into the future years, which puts some further pressure on future years. At meeting six, it was also heard that the 3.85 increase on the levy would result in an average tax rate increase for 2022 of 1.68% as per the table below. The landfill rate is not yet set until later in the year when the regulation is implemented by the Ontario Property Tax Analysis System and will require an amendment at that time. This would translate to approximately $10.50 per $100 of assessment on a residential property at 1.68%. Meeting six, focus on the future. Strategies to manage the future of assets in the County of Elgin include, but are not limited to, putting growth funds into a reserve that can be delayed until there is a year an in-year surplus that warrants some savings to be used into the future. The growth amount may also fluctuate from the amount in the budget, so it will be prudent to monitor this and base savings on actuals. Once the tra transportation master plan is received and the asset management plan is enabled, the county will have better data on which to fine-tune timelines of projects. Moving projects ahead or back a year where a surplus is available may be an opportunity to manage funding pressures. Adopting a best practice to put surplus funds from prior years into a reserve for use in years where there is unusual pressure. Divesting of assets, 
should still be investigated and may be a viable option. Long-term financing of a major build such as Terrace Lodge rebuild is proposed to be amortized over 25 years to match the funding envelope and remove pressure using a longer repayment period. These strategies are offered numerically on the next slide for the committee's review as a summary of possible options for consideration as it relates to the current plan. It should be noted that the plan is flexible to accommodate knowns and unknowns as better information is received. So as you can see, um, the pressure points from years 23 to 26 are highlighted and could be managed with some pre-planning and coordination as presented below. Additionally, 2031 would require additional consideration after 2026 is managed. By earmarking approximately 14 million of growth funds, either through levy or growth reserve, moving some projects between years and setting aside possible surplus funds for use in future years, we would be able to first manage option number two as presented by engineering and additionally option number one, which included the roundabout and some rehabilitation on Gillette, Jamestown and Fulton Line bridges over the 10 year capital plan. And now we are at meeting number, or meeting number seven. So the next steps here, um, the budget committee was in favor of reducing the levy from 5.6 to 3.8%, resulting in a suggested tax rate increase of 1.68%. It was then decided to move forward to bring a summary of the work done over the last six meetings before a special meeting of council. A preliminary discussion of the borrowing strategies for Terrace Lodge as outlined in the new plan was undertaken at a high level. Staff have discussed with Infrastructure Ontario some strategies to manage the necessary borrowings over the next two years and how the two upcoming elections may have effect on approval timelines. The Budget Committee also requested a discussion regarding tax ratios brought forward. At the time of the last Budget Committee meeting, the Minister of Finance's tax letter had not yet been received. Recently, this letter was received and has been attached in Appendix 2 in readiness for the discussion about tax ratios. A list of the current tax ratios has been included for review and consideration. In readiness for this meeting, staff have incorporated the changes discussed at the last Budget meeting into the Budget for 2022 and beyond. This has some effect on the outlying years due to inflationary factors. The levy was only changed for 2022 with the remaining placeholders holders left the same in the example in the outlying years. Additional items have been identified since the last budget meeting that have impact on 2022 and beyond. These costs and their 10 year impact have been calculated and will be presented to discuss a possible strategy to manage those additions. This was um, a three-year overview of the budget. Um, we have an actual a budget for 2020, a budget for 2021, and 2022. The tax ratios are then presented on the next slide. Um, these are the ones that we have used to do our calculation for 2022. As previously mentioned, the landfill ratio will not be ready until late March or early April. And Appendix 2 is a letter received from the Minister of Finance related to anticipated changes to the small-scale on-farm business subclass. Small-scale on-farm business subclass um, is just a small change from the assessment eligibility um, which will be expanded from 50,000 to 100,000 on eligible properties. MPAC will provide a further, further information for municipalities before March of 2022. And you will then know which properties will be eligible for this subclass. A preliminary review though indicates that approximately five properties in the county may be eligible for this um, reduction. A council decision would be required to further move this tax ratio change forward. And if there are any other possible changes, we can have a discussion about that if council so wishes.
focus on the new plan. Um, the necessary changes to budget have been incorporated from the last budget meeting. Um, the levy has only been changed as mentioned for the budget in 2022 and a placeholder has been left in the example, the 683,000 for future impacts and impact on future year, years, which we will have to accommodate um, as we know the growth in those years. The new budget plan for 22 to 2031 is provided in further detail on Appendix 3 and 4, which shows the uh, net income and the capital. And emerging pressure points are highlighted in yellow. So 2023 again, 2027 and 2031. A placeholder has been added for the additions requested since the last budget meeting. These items are outlined um, on their various departmental presentations in Appendix 1. Staff have calculated the projected costs and the implications on those additions on the plan for 2022 to 2031. The budget plan beyond the immediate year is fluid and can be adjusted as needed, but it is important to highlight the impact that a decision today may have on the future. Focus is mainly on 2022 as the immediate concern with 2023 and 2026 as emerging areas of concern. The move to give back the surplus and reduce the levy enabled a reduction in the tax rate. It may not be desirable, as previously mentioned, to reverse this decision to offset these new additional costs that we were discussed. The growth reserve, however, is just beginning to accumulate in 2022, but it was not removed or utilized to get us to this point. Using this fund to offset these additional costs can reduce our ability to use them in the future. However, by setting aside approximately 250,000 in 2022 and approximately 2.5 million over the full 10 year plan, it will cover most of the outlying years on the additional costs. And this is illustrated on the next slide. If unexpected project funding is received throughout the year, we can also reduce the need to use the growth fund as it will help offset costs already associated in year. So as you can see, adjusting the growth fund in year will enable these changes to be accommodated using a known expense line that can be adjusted up or down as needed. If the reserve is not fully used, it will allow us to set aside some funds into the future for unknown emergencies and pressures. Additionally, we may have other surplus operating or capital that we will set aside to fund future items and will take additional pressure off the levy increases and the use of the growth fund. We have a small a sort of high level discussion on Terrace Lodge um, infrastructure Ontario funding. During the budget meeting, there was some discussion around financing strategy for Terrace Lodge. The expected compliance premium from the Ministry of Health will be received over a period of 25 years for the purpose of this rebuild. Staff are suggesting that the timeline for repayment of the expected debt, 25 million, also be amortized over 25 years. By matching the repayment period to the funding period, the county will pay more in interest over the life of the, de the debenture, but the pressure to raise the funds for this is removed by the funding we will receive. Below is a closer look at this expected cost as outlined in the first eight years of the payback period within the 10 year plan. The highlighted yellow areas are the debt that we currently have incurred. Um, namely the 12 million and then a proposed 25 million. The line below the yellow is the proposed uh, funding that we'll, we will receive from Terrace Lodge uh, from the ministry to help offset that funding. Or sorry, that debt. Um, Staff have been researching the debenture application process with our area representative from Infrastructure Ontario. There are a few timeline issues in 2022 as we get closer to both of the provincial and municipal elections. Elections normally include blackout periods where decisions are neither made nor finalized. 
Infrastructure Ontario this time frame will begin when the RIP drops in June until sometime in August and our possible sign-up dates would then occur sometime in September and possibly as late as October. This timing would then encroach upon our municipal election period. Initial reviews indicate that the amount we expect to need is $25 million. Infrastructure Ontario suggests that we may want to apply for more than $25 million so that if additional need arises, we do not have to reapply. If we do not need the full amount we would then that we apply for, we would only debenture the amount that we would need. The full construction pre-flow debenture must be finalized within five years of approval or 120 days after substantial completion. The process for a project of this size takes a few extra levels of approval on IO's end of things and therefore additional time. IO staff begin suggest we begin the process in early February of 2022, <clears throat> which may enable us the full application process to be completed before the June provincial election deadline. We would then have the funds available to us as needed in early 2023 and beyond, which would ensure we are fully funded and able to meet our payment obligations. We would pay interest on whatever funds are pre-flowed to us, or we can choose to take out a large portion of the of the debenture in order to secure a favorable interest rate. However, we would not secure an interest rate until we took out the debenture. So that's just um, one small item. Um, summary and wrap up. If there are any questions at this time, I would like to entertain any questions. Go ahead, Councillor Jones. Uh, one question with uh, uh, the landfill. Has any consideration been made into the, right now there's no application on the table for an expansion. So at some point here in the future, there's going to be a reduction, like significant re reduction. Has that been accounted for? Because it takes about 10 years to get an expansion on a, land a landfill and they've not applied at this point. Just a, a question for the committee if uh, that's been I'm not aware of that, so I can certainly look into that, but I appreciate you telling me. This is, it's significant, right? It's uh, compared to industrial, it's 30 times more per acre. Right. I guess I can uh, reach out to MPAC and find out. You don't want to stir that pot too much. No. <laughs> It took a long time to get to where we are right now. But. Are there any other questions? Go ahead, Councillor McPhail. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Warren. Uh, just through this presentation, uh, thank you very much for it. Uh, uh, I'm just wondering that the provincial wide reassessment that is coming, that uh, unfortunately it must be so scary, the province won't open that doors box right now, but uh, is that and how is that going to Im impact our future? Uh, how, how are we going to deal? Because we all we all know what land prices and we all know what residential uh, evaluations have done. And uh, so certainly I think there's going to be a, a lot of mitigation that's going to have to go in there because uh, we're going to have to change some rates around to reflect the fact that the assessments have gone way up and we can't uh, use it as a cash cow to fund uh, projects. Uh, I think we have to be fair to our public. So is that going to create a lot of work on your your end or uh, how, what have you put any thought that far down the road? No, I haven't actually. <laughs> we have, um, my understanding is that's not happening until 2024. They actually have uh, held it in abeyance until then. So we will have some significant changes at, between 2016 assessments and 2024 assessments or 2023 assessments. So I think all of the uh, municipalities will be experiencing the same pressures and certainly we will have to address ratios and increase at that time. This is going much back and for those of you who remember when the tax assessment first came in there was a lot of 
grinding and gnashing of teeth that what went on and a lot of trying to figure out what's what's the right way and I think that's where we uh, originally set up the mill rate stabilization uh, fund to be able to offset <coughs> any of those big changes so I mean this is this is going to be something that somebody down the road is going to have to really get their head around and I guess it's not time yet and I didn't know whether that was just something that's out there too far even to worry about yet. It is definitely something to be aware of, yes. 2024, that's kicking the can down the road again, so it must be real scary. <laughs> Are there any other questions for Jennifer? Go ahead, Councillor Menel. Just a comment, and certainly I, I'd be prepared to support the, the recommendations. Um, the committee has gone through with a surgical knife trying to get this as close as possible to get a reasonable tax rate, and I appreciate that. Um, there was an opportunity to, to give us a lot more flexibility, and it's called development charges. I know that was turned down on a five to four vote, but I asked staff what that would indicate to, to the 22 budget. It would give us $2.2 million, and uh, that would certainly, go, going down the road, would give uh, finance department a lot more flexibility and certainly meet our infrastructure needs uh, going forward. So um, it would not affect the existing taxpayer. Uh, what it does affect is the guy that sold his house for $1.2 million in Toronto and built a house in Elgin County for 600000 That's the one who's going to be impacted by the development charges. So I'm certainly hoping that the new council coming in 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 the November of 2022 would revisit that and would certainly give uh, the county a lot more uh, flexibility going forward. So that's just my comment. Yeah, are there any further comments or questions? Oh, <laughs> I'm surprised. I thought we'd have a lot of questions or comments. Well, it was a 15% increase, you know, a whole bunch of <laughs> 6 8 is, is probably very palatable, I think, to today's market. Yeah. Madam Warren, I think, I think it's just an indicator of uh, how well a job that the budget committee did on this budget. Mm -hmm. So, uh, go ahead, Councillor Jones. Thank you. I uh, just, I guess, if, if there is a concern, is uh, you know, 1.68 looks great, and that's great, but there is concerns about going forward with the levy and how that affects our capital moving forward in years to come. And, and uh, the county's been down this road before where we, uh, when four property closed up and and uh, I think uh, uh, Councilman Manel was around at that point when uh, there's had to be some really tough decisions made. It was a 10 year plan to get back on our feet. And I think that plan ended about a year ago. And it looks like uh, we're headed right back to where we were and and infrastructure at some point, like we found in the past, is going to come back to bite us in the butt. And uh, that's just a concern I have. Any further concerns? Uh, Councillor Purcell, did you have any comments or Councillor Martin? Uh, thank, thank you, Mary. Uh, no, I was going to be quiet because a lot of folks did say what I wanted to. I do want to thank the committee for doing the heavy lifting and um, I, I think, you know, as Councillor Jones just pointed out, um, if we have the opportunity to start getting ready for some of the nasty surprises coming down the road that we don't know exactly what they are, but we know they're coming, um, it might be an opportunity. The problem is right now uh, with everybody struggling within our tax base, we have to be as prudent as possible. And I think the committee has done a good job of that. But he's right, it will come back to haunt us if we're not being a little more aggressive about taking money out of people's pockets. It's just timing is not appropriate for that right now. Um, another thing, uh, the communication has been tremendous, I think, this year surrounding this. And a lot of our public is very well aware of it. Uh, I'll even make a shout out to Rob Perry. Um, he covered all the committee meetings and uh, and this has been widely circulated in the public even before it was brought to us. 
um, in this process. And uh, thank goodness we still have the odd reporter out there that does things on an objective, factual basis as opposed to an opinion. And uh, I, I'm I'm quite happy. Uh, I'm interested to see how everybody supports everything. The Terrace Lodge project. Um, What's being proposed is what we had discussed on the committee, as you know, you were there right from the very beginning. Uh, so that's not a surprise, but it makes sense if the province can't afford to give us the money up front, uh, even though that's what they allude to in the papers and whatnot when they do it, uh, then we should synchronize uh, the debt and the repayment wisely that way. And it looks like finance is all over, um, perhaps even boring before interest rates start going crazy and locking some of that in. So um, that's just my comments and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Councillor Purcell. And Councillor Martin, did you have any comments? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I'm afraid to turn my video on. I can do it, but I may well freeze, as you know. Um, I wanted to reiterate, I, I do want to say thank you very much to the committee because they have worked extremely hard and had a lot of meetings and gone through a lot of uh, uh, reiterations or iterations, sorry. And I do appreciate very much the work they've done. I do want to echo what Councillor Mennell said about development charges, because it certainly would really help at budgeting time um, if we had that. And as we say, it's the developers who will suffer and the people who are building houses. It will not be our taxpayers. At the moment, our taxpayers have to cover everything. So, uh, no, I, I'm willing to support the budget as presented, and I do thank everyone for their work. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Are there any further questions or comments? Um, start with uh, just just one final comment for me, Madam Mormon, is uh, Martin, is that uh, we have to definitely keep up the communication with our lower tiers. And I, I don't know about the rest of you, but when you take a look at your breakdown of the money that you collect in taxes. Uh, we are now sending, West Dogan's case, we are now sending more money to the county, keeping for our own purposes. And so that is uh, something that more and more your councillors are going to keep an eye on. So I think that we have to have a good line of communication as, okay, you're taking the lion's share of our money, where's the money going and what are we getting it for? Okay, just a quick follow up on that, uh, through you, Madam Morton, to Councillor McPhail. I think this came up last year as well, and we'll work with our local municipal partners to see if there are some joint communication initiatives that we can push forward to ensure that locally people understand where their money goes and at the county level where their money is going as well. So once everyone wraps up their budget locally, which I think many of you are well on your way, um, we'll have our team work with your teams to get something in the works. Great suggestion. Councillor Chakir, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Morton. I, I just wanted to comment on the infrastructure piece because uh, I don't know which meeting it was, uh, but staff had proposed several options and many of which, uh, so there was like one to six or something, uh, and many of which included divestments, included postponing uh, projects and we kept looking at, uh, we knew that this was just going to be, you know, kicking the can down the road. So we ended up with the ability to do option one. Which my understanding was option one was the most responsible was the, it was option number one, as in the best choice proposed by staff based on information that we have from asset management plan and still keeping some flexibility for uh, unknowns and, and surprises. So I, I actually was quite pleased that we were able to pick the best choice and not defer any projects. So because I, I, I was hearing from earlier comments that perhaps we were deferring things and postponing things and we would have to pay for that later. I feel that we were able to avoid doing that and be responsible now. Thank you, Councilor Gare. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment that if it wasn't for our staff, we wouldn't have had all these wonderful reports. They have worked tirelessly. They have given us all the information and thank you so much. It's made our job a lot easier as the budget committee. And um, they've 
They've jumped through hoops for us. They've got every bit of information we asked for, they've presented it. So we really appreciate all the hard work. And the fact that some of the stuff we were asking for was, it was kind of over the top, but it came through. So we really appreciate it. Are there any further comments? Okay, seeing none. The resolution, please. It resolved that the 2022 budget be approved as presented and that the 2023 to 2031 budget with option one be accepted in principle, that the landfill ratio be accepted in principle to be amended as per regulation 9517 once updated for 2022, and that staff proceed to include, uh, do we have a direction on that one? Small scale. I do not have direction. Right. Um, so maybe before we proceed with the okay. resolution, we should circle back to the small scale on farm business class. Yes. Okay, Sorry for that. Sorry about that. So that was one where we would need to have council direction as with whether we wanted to proceed or not proceed with um, adopting that into our tax ratios. Uh, we currently do have the one and there's about five properties that would be affected in Elgin County. Um, but we will know more once we have the um, information from MPAC, which would be in March. Go ahead, Councilor. Certainly, I, I, would, I would support that. It gives the, the small operations, especially the mom and pop, the, the, are doing the retail out of the farm, whether it be, be hogs or chickens or eggs or what have you. It just gives them a bit of a break, and, and certainly I would encourage it. it uh, uh, it's nothing better than farm fresh, and, and it eliminates the middleman, so I would support it. Uh, Councillor McDaniel. Is there a definition? You will know more information. Um, I don't have it. I, I provided the excerpt from the letter from the Ministry of Finance, but there will be more information forthcoming. I know we've had discussions in West Ogden about what is our farm retail through, you know, trying to sort that out through our zoning bylaw. Currently they are existing and they I, they have been uh, already identified, so they would not be a new group. So it's just an a, a extra relief for that particular group. Councillor Ketchupaw. Yes, thank you, Madam Morton. Just to clarify on that, uh, currently, the program, if I understand correctly, uh, provides tax relief on the first 50000 and the program amendment is to move it up to 100000 value. And these properties are already identified through MPAC. So it's not a very onerous task for staff to administer. And as uh, Jennifer has already pointed out, there's five currently on the roll that are participating in the program. I don't expect uh, there's going to be a huge uptake. But again, as uh, Councillor Mendel has indicated, it's, it's uh, uh, I guess, uh, from an optics point of view, showing some support for these small scale businesses uh, and, and uh, you know, helping to promote that in, in a small way. I don't think it's a big cost item. Can't buy a used pickup truck for 50 grand, so. Well, that's correct. But I mean, uh, I think the cost of the original program, was it in the $7,000 range to the county? Yeah, so we, we've, we've kind of roughly guessed it's going to be somewhere in the two to $3,000 shift range, maybe yes. lower than that. So it's not going to be a large amount. Any further discussion about this item? Okay, all right, let's start again. It resolved that the 2022 budget be approved as presented and that the 2023 to 2031 budget with option one be accepted in principle that the landfill ratio be accepted in principle to be amended as per regulation 9517 once updated for 2022 and that staff pre proceed to include the small scale on farm business subclass in the tax ratios beginning in 2022 and that the recommended tax increase of 1.68 3.85% let increase on the levy be accepted in principle and amended once the landfill rate is set and that staff proceed with an application to Infrastructure Ontario to finance the Terrace Lodge redevelopment project, and that staff bring for, bring a report to Council regarding the financing at a future meeting. Okay, someone, someone to second. <clears throat> Councillor Ketchupaw and Councillor McPhail. Vote, please. Yes. Councillor Purcell. 
Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Mennell. Yes. Councillor Jaguer. Yes. Councillor Ketchabaugh. Yes. Madam Warden. Yes. Eight zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. Um, there's there is no council correspondence today. Um, are there any statements or inquiries by members? There's no notice of motion. Are there any matters of urgency? Seeing none. There is no need for a closed meeting today. So to motion to adopt recommendations from the Committee of the Whole. Be it resolved that we do now adopt recommendations of Committee of the Whole. Okay, someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Mennell and Councillor Jones. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Mennell. Yes. Councillor Shaguer. Yes. Councillor Ketchabaugh. Yes. Warden. Yes. Eight zero. The motion is carried. The next item is bylaw number 22-08. We had a first, second, and third read of bylaw 22-08 being a bylaw to confirm proceedings of the Municipal Council of the Corporation of the County of Elgin at the February 1st, 2022 okay, so meeting. Someone to move and someone to second. Councillor Jaguer and Councillor Purcell. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Mennell? Yes. Councillor Jaguer? Yes. Councillor Ketchabaugh? Yes. Adam Warden? Yes. 8 0. Motion is carried. An adjournment. Be it resolved that we do now adjourn at 1 46 p.m. to meet again on February the 8th, 2022, at 9 a.m. The move is someone to second. Councillor Jones? Councillor Martin? And Councillor Martin? Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Purcell? Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Mennell. Yes. Councilor Jaguer. Yes. Councilor Ketchabaugh. Yes. Adam Warden. Yes. Eight zero. The motion is carried. Thank you, and thank you.